steampunk. Still the worst genre in science fiction. There's one thing the city's taught me. You can put a price on anything. Secrets, reputations, a life. I'm starting to think that all the former Eidos games Square Enix bought the rights to are under contract to open with cliché, overwrought narration. First Tomb Raider, then Hitman, and now this. I haven't played Deus Ex Human Revolution, but I'm willing to wager money. This early moment in the game is completely scripted to give you the impression that this is a busy city full of life and things to do. Enjoy it because you will never see this many people in game again. It's all patrolling guards and the occasional homeless person after this. These windows may actually beat Mass Effect's elevators for most annoying loading gate. Safe hidden behind painting cliché. Considering how many of these there are in the game, I'm surprised that anyone considers this a safe place to hide something. Aaron. Of course it is. Care to make a little more noise next time? How else would you know it was me? Antagonistic partnership cliché. I'm just going to flat out tell everyone right now that these two are basically steampunk versions of Tetsuo and Kaneda. In fact, the plot of this entire game feels like steampunk Akira. You should get yourself one of these. See you on the other side. That does seem handy, but how are you expecting Garrett to get one of his own? You said yourself that you invented it. Jealous of the claw? I made it myself. You do still steal, right? I've been stealing since before you could crawl. I've been doing this since you were a baby cliché. So how much did you steal? <laughs> Aaron starts to ask Garrett how much he stole, but then awkwardly stops and laughs because she assumes she won. Garrett just stole multiple silver cups and candlesticks, and you stole a single gold pocket watch. That's at least a draw in my book. This job's getting more complicated by the second. This job's getting too complicated, cliché. Why'd you kill this guard? How exactly did Aaron kill this guard? Yeah, her claw has hooks on it, but she hit him pretty lightly on the head. Plus, he's wearing a helmet. In comparison, Garrett routinely clocks guys in the head with a blackjack, which is a much higher chance of killing someone. You're holding me back. Relying on that claw is holding you back. Garrett criticizes Aaron for relying on a useful tool for her line of work. Is Garrett somehow implying he doesn't rely on tools? Because that would make him a hypocrite, since he is never without his bow, multiple arrow types, a lockpick, and a blackjack. It's nice to know that the person who splashed white paint all over the climbable ledges in Tomb Raider found more work. Robes. Robes are always a bad sign. I'm guessing Garrett was raised Catholic. We are gathered here to usher this city into a new age. One of progress and industrial enlightenment. Let us begin the channeling of the primal. Let's usher in an era of science and industrialism by holding a magical ceremony. Makes perfect sense. And you're not ready yet. You know, I'm not a kid anymore. <sighs> you're not ready, I'm not a kid anymore, cliche. These two have gone through almost every line of cliché partner dialogue in the book in just the first 30 minutes. That deserves like three extra sins. Aaron, a professional thief who pickpockets people and kills guards with ease, is easily thwarted by a game of keep away. Oh come on, taking a metal hook to the face like that should have torn half her face off. We've seen this thing kill guards with a single hit and it can't do more than lightly scratch her makeup. I realize that Aaron is portrayed as young and inexperienced, but there comes a point when you graduate from being inexperienced to just plain stupid. This is that point. Remember when I said this game was steampunk Akira? This scene should clue you in to who's the Tetsuo in this game. Garrett somehow knows that Aaron's claw functions as a grappling hook. He just stole this from her a minute ago and Aaron said she invented it, so Garrett couldn't have any prior knowledge of how it works. I have not edited this scene in any way. That's how it transitions. We go from Garrett hanging from the roof of the Baron's Manor to hiding in a covered car being pulled by two beggars in the course of one cut to black scene transition. I reloaded my game because I thought I accidentally skipped a cutscene. That's not food for our bellies! That's not medicine for the sick! Don't think you're safe because you've got a job shoveling shit for the rich! Even back in the day, Tumblr's social justice bloggers were annoying. Do that! Who are you speaking with? You could have just said you were talking to the guy right next to you. No need to blow your cover by punching a guard in the face. That's like shooting at a cop after he just asks you where you're headed tonight. For someone who criticized Aaron for relying on the claw, Garrett seems to have no problem relying on it himself. Garrett lives in a giant clock tower in the middle of the city. This is the equivalent of someone living in the top of Elizabeth Tower in London. Not exactly the most inconspicuous place you could have chosen for your hideout. There's going to be maintenance workers going in and out every day, not to mention the bail tolling every hour to keep you up at night. Where there are really no apartments available, something a bit low-key downtown. I take back what I said about the windows being the most annoying loading gate ever. The crawling through boxes then mashing E to move a beam is now king of annoying loading gates. Huh? There's a lifter here! He got the damn thing open! I'll find you and earn more coin! 
Normally I would try to think of something funny to say here about the AI, but honestly I think it speaks for itself. Far be it for me to pry about where you've been for the last fucking year. I thought both you and Aaron had been killed in the mansion attack. According to Basso, Garrett has been missing for an entire year since the events at the Baron's Manor. Basso had no idea Garrett was still alive, but somehow still managed to send a carrier pigeon to Garrett's clock tower on the same day and minute Garrett returned home. And even had a job already lined up for him. Garrett goes to see the Queen of Beggars since she's playing the role of the wise old hag who knows everything but won't give you any direct answers to any of your questions stereotype. The Queen of Beggars offers Garrett a cup of tea, which he holds for about 10 seconds, then sits it down without even taking a courtesy sip. Garrett is a dick to common hospitality. You know what they say about me. That your character design rips off Cruella de Vil? The Queen of Beggars tells Garrett that her people found him and nursed him back to health, which doesn't explain how Garrett escaped the manor that night. Garrett was hanging from the roof with the claw, which was stuck into the leg of the Thief Taker General no less, and then the roof collapsed on top of him. Yet he escaped despite being catatonic and still has the claw. I call bullshit lampshading on this. I take back what I said earlier about crawling through boxes being the most annoying loading gate ever. Hanging from a meat hook while it slowly starts and stops its way up a track is a new low. Let's count just how many cliches they managed to pack into one villain. Introduce villain feet first. Villain with crippled leg. Snidely whiplash mustache. Killing one of his own men to prove he's a bastard. That's four cliches already and just one villain. That's almost enough to fill a row in villain cliche bingo. Garrett? Uh, Garrett, I'm slipping! Ah! This is your city too? <sighs> one of the writers of this game thought to himself, how do I advance the plot in a believable and totally uncliche way? I know, I'll have the main character pass out after hearing a hallucination of a girl he saw die. That writer still has a job. This is the second time that someone has given Garrett something to drink, only to have him hold the cup for most of the scene, then set it down, not taking a single sip. I'll get you your book. Garrett agrees to steal a book for Orion without first discussing the price. That violates the first rule of business. This switch is practically invisible. Then I expect that to be reflected in your contribution. But you already upped the black tax twice this quarter. These two are standing the same distance from you, but the Thief Taker General sounds barely audible. At first I thought this was a bug, so I reloaded my save and tried again. But nope, still the same. They ship the game like this. Judgment's getting too old. I want something younger. No! Petals do not work directly with the... Uh, client. Villain is a pedophile cliche. Add another stamp to our villain cliche bingo board. Thief's boob rendering capabilities are five years behind Metro Last Light. Rotating staircases? Is that a steampunk thing too now? Why add another feature to stairs? Have we not mastered stair technology to the fullest? Just build multiple freaking staircases. Problem solved. This is the same book we saw being opened at the start of the game. No explanation as to how it got from there to being locked up in an abandoned ruin under a brothel. And it can't be a copy. Orion said it was the only one known to exist. Garrett had to use a fancy decoder ring on a combination lock to get into the ruins under the brothel. Yet there was a much easier access point under this prostitute's bed. Punish me, mother. I've been banned. Villain has weird sexual fetish cliché. The sound effect for this backhanded bitch slap happens before the general hits her. Oh, come on now. You have to see men dressed in skin-tight leather on a daily basis with your job. But only when he's under the bed does it make you scream. The thief taker general flips the bed over with Garrett still hiding under it and somehow this sends Garrett flying across the room ahead of the bed and ends with the bed pinning Garrett against the wall. Because fuck physics, and logic, and common sense. Seriously, how did they screw up that series of very simple events? Where's Basso? The thief taker general dragged him off along with some of my graven. He's taken it. Orion explains that the thief taker general stormed in looking for the book and dragged Basso away. Couple things wrong here. How did the general even know about the book and that Basso had it? He was at the brothel collecting taxes, not looking for the book, and he certainly never saw us holding it. And two, even if he did, how would he connect Basso to Garrett? Are there no other fences in this entire city? We're not so different, you and I. We're not so different, you and I, cliche. In order to spring Basso, Garrett needs to sneak into the keep. The only way to do that is with the blueprints. To get to said blueprints, Garrett has to hit a button hidden behind a painting, then his scale model of the city rises from the floor, and finally he has to arrange a puzzle all to unlock a wall panel just so he can steal the blueprints. I'm starting to think this guy designed buildings for the Umbrella Corporation as well. If you're going to hide loading gates by making me crawl through ventilation ducts, don't make me watch a loading screen right after. Otherwise, what was the freaking point? Just have a loading screen. You can even put helpful tips on there. Like stop playing this game, or resell information. This is the second explosion that rocked the keep tonight. Why would all these guards continue standing around where the debris could fall on them? Elevator loading gates. The circle of badly designed loading gates is now complete. I even wished I had Genevieve with me. Oh, 
That scum sucking bastard. I always thought if anyone was gonna kill her, it'd be me. I don't know what's more stupid, that this game is trying to have an emotional moment or that it's trying to have an emotional moment over a bird. You're not thinking about those tall tales about the legendary Great Safe, are you? Garrett leaves a heavily injured Basso in the middle of the keep so he can go rob the Baron's giant safe. Dude, in case you didn't notice, his building is still full of guards and is currently exploding. Basso doesn't look like he can make it out of here on his own on a good day. If you were a good enough shot with your wrist-mounted crossbow to nail someone's hand to a wall, why not just put one through Garrett's skull? Your end goal is to kill Garrett for crippling your leg, so why does it matter if he hangs or not? Didn't you know, Garrett? Greed is a sin. So is Lust, last time I checked. That didn't stop you from visiting a brothel. You made it so easy. All I had to do was get you in the building. Was blowing up the building also part of your plan? Because that sounds like a really shitty plan. You see, I know you better than you know yourself. I know you better than you know yourself, cliche. Are we going to have to start a villain dialogue bingo board now? Garrett opens up the safe and finds a piece of the primal stone, which is the perfect opportunity for the writer to deus ex machina a way into the plot for Garrett to know where he needs to go next. Otherwise, the story would have stopped here. That writer still has a job, by the way. Are you really implying that Garrett, inside the safe, survived a fall from the top of the keep? Someone needs to explain basic physics to the developers. Never mind the falling elevator scenario. This is the crystal skull refrigerator nonsense all over again. How's the hand? How did you know about Garrett's hand? You and I left the keep when Garrett was injured. You even said to meet him here once he escaped. So he couldn't have met you earlier for you to have seen it. Don't become a ghost yourself. I've been a ghost all my life. That had to be the easiest softball trailer line setup I've ever witnessed. <laughs> Jump scare. You get exactly one. Any more than this and it's two sins for everyone afterward. Okay, the asylum is actually creepy. Minus one sin. Second jump scare. That's two extra sins. So Aaron survived the event of the manor as well, only she was captured and brought here in an attempt to draw the primal out of her that she absorbed. Of course, the Baron's idea for drawing the primal out includes horrific torture and medical experiments. That certainly won't backfire on anyone. Garrett escapes a life-threatening situation by fading to white. I'm serious, he's dragged by his feet back into a room full of abominations when the scene cuts to white and he's now all by himself. It's Aldous who took the girl! Aldous! You know him better as Orion! It's a plot twist that anyone who watched the cinematic at the beginning of the game saw coming since Orion has you steal two of the three items in the cutscene. If he were to find the final... Your eye? Or the missing piece? Did Garrett seriously never wonder why his right eye was a different color and he could see in the dark? Careful, I saw something like this in another game and I accidentally started a resonance cascade. They used to plunge a caught thief's hand into hot tar, Garrett. Black handing. But yours I'll have for my mantelpiece. Villain monologues when he has the hero be cliche. Holy shit, you've already won villain cliche bingo. Give it a rest and shoot Garrett in his head with your wrist mounted crossbow already. I see that Square Enix managed to reuse one of their level design ideas from Tomb Raider. The accident didn't just fill her with Primal, it fused her with the city. So you knew about the Primal on Aaron this whole time but refused to tell Garrett when he asked. What's more important, saving the city or keeping up your reputation as a mysterious old woman? If she dies, with the Primal still trapped in her, then it dies too. Force entry of a mass destruction of the city unless the hero saves the day cliche. See, it's stuff like this. This is information you should have told Garrett sooner. Magic stone that can destroy the city looks and sounds just like two refrigerator magnets clicking together. Garrett starts this scene in a balcony overlooking Orion and Aaron, then ends it down on the floor having already stolen a third piece of the primal stone. Sure, it's implied that Garrett walked down and pickpocketed the stone while having another one of his Aaron hallucinations, but that doesn't make this any less stupid. This one's mine. If the Thief Taker General was working for Orion this whole time, why did we have to steal the ring from him in the first place? And why did Orion freak out when he thought the General had taken the book along with Basso? Eren kills Orion, then tries to kill Garrett because fuck it, she's steampunk Tetsuo at this point. Once again, I did not edit this scene in any way. Garrett and Eren go from being inside a completely sealed room to hanging off the edge of the ship with only a single cut to black transition. Garrett! Garrett, I'm slipping! 
The claw! Give me the claw! The developers like that opening cutscene so much they use it again seven hours later. I can't even get a USB stick in on the first try, but Garrett can fit a gear-shaped keyring into the book while Orion's corpse is still wearing it. That may be the biggest piece of bullshit in the game. The claw stuck into the post after Garrett wakes up is supposed to reassure us that Aaron survived. However, there is a suspicious lack of rope attached to the grappling hook, which makes me wonder how exactly Aaron climbed back up. Main character watches the sunrise in a cliché. Punish me, mother. I've been bad.